So I really wanted to be able to wholeheartedly recommend and love the razor blade when I initially tested it, but there were a few things that just stopped me from doing so, mainly that absolutely abysmal battery life I had with my review unit, but a few things have changed on that, and I've got an update to that problem, and after using this thing extensively for the past two months, my thoughts may have changed. Does time really heal all wounds? Let's talk about it. Before we begin, for a more detailed look at this new Razer Blade 2018, check out our full review we published a few weeks ago. You're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure you watch that video first because I've got an update to a few of the problems I discussed in that original review. And in that video, I was admittedly pretty critical about the blade, specifically the battery life I got because I only was able to get about three and a half hours of use before the machine just completely ran out of juice. It just wasn't acceptable. And many of you guys in the comments called me out for that. You said I was doing something wrong. Others were a bit less harsh and offered some suggestions and thank you for that, but in the end, it looks like some isolated software issues on my review unit may have been the culprit and the cause for that abnormally poor battery life. And in the interest of full disclosure to you guys, I want to tell you guys I did work with Razer directly after that video went live. We ran additional tests. I even sent the machine back to them for their own testing. And in the end, we still don't know exactly what was the issue, but it seems like some weird software issues in the machine were the cause for that poor battery life. In the meantime though, Razer did want to send us another blade to check out to put through the ringer once again and test, and results are much better this time around. And the unit I've been testing for the past few weeks has the exact same processor, screen, RAM, and everything else about it is the same. Only difference is it has a GTX 1070 Max-Q instead of the 1060 Max-Q we had in our other unit. So when this new unit came in, the first thing of course I wanted to test was the battery life. And I'm happy to say that after using the battery a lot, the results are much better this time around. I ran the same programs, had the same settings set on the machine, even the screen set at the higher 140 hertz refresh rate, and I was able to get about five and a half hours of battery life while browsing the web and watching videos, much better than the three and a half hours I got before. And if you really wanna squeeze just a bit more battery life out of your blade, you can drop that refresh rate from 144 hertz down to 60, and you can get close to seven hours. And I ran a bunch of additional tests on this laptop. We're even starting to implement a custom battery drainage test that we're gonna put through the ringer on all the laptops we get here at Techno Buffalo. And I'm happy to say that after running it multiple times, the tests were consistent and the battery life on this blade is much better. Something I suspect for all the blades out there and I just had some isolated abnormal issues with the other unit that I tested. Battery aside, the machine still performs just as well as ever. There's no doubt that an 8th Gen i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a GTX 1070 Max-Q make for one powerful machine. And I've yet to find anything that I do on a daily basis that bogs this machine down or makes it sluggish or slow in any way. And this is the gaming laptop after all and it runs games on here just as well as before. Again, you can run pretty much any game on this machine, but the quality is gonna depend on the game and how taxing it is on that GPU and CPU. And if you're curious on how games like PUBG and GTA 5 play on the blade, check out our full review. We've got more coverage on specific games in that video. It is worth mentioning again that the fans are gonna get a bit loud when the machine is under heavy workload. I was running some benchmarks for this video and I had the blades sitting on my desk here in the office and it did sound like a jet engine was beginning to spin up and take off from my desk. When you're doing things like playing games, exporting videos, doing anything that's really gonna push that CPU to its max, especially when the machine is in gaming mode, the, the laptop is gonna do everything that it can to cool itself down, which is gonna result in some fan noise. Though I will say if you're just browsing the web and watching videos, it's gonna remain near silent. And speaking of running benchmarks, we ran a variety of different tests in both PC Mark and 3D Mark on the blade. And if you're curious about what those results were and you love to compare spec sheets and benchmarks, here are the results up on the screen right now. You can look at the results and you can see there's just no doubt that this thing is a very powerful laptop. Still really like the 15 inch display. Colors look really good and vibrant. I still would like the extra resolution you're getting on that 4K model, but I don't wanna give up that 144 hertz refresh rate. Even if it's a 1080p panel, it's a nice feature to have. It's 100% sRGB color accurate, and it's an excellent display for both content consumption and content creation. Also, you may not think of a touchscreen being a big deal on a laptop, specifically a gaming laptop, and it's by no means a deal breaker, but I will say once you use a laptop that has it, it's hard to go back to one that doesn't. So the 4K touch model, obviously has that touchscreen built in. Would have loved to have seen it on this one, but that might be more of a technical limitation more than a Razer decision. My opinions on the speakers have not changed at all. They still get really loud and they sound okay, but they're just not very good. In fact, the Lenovo Y530, a gaming laptop that we took a look at a couple weeks ago, costs less than half the starting price tag of the baseline blade and has built-in speakers that I think sound much better, much more full, much less tinny and hollow than the blade. Take a listen for yourself. 
that's some of the best tech in the car industry. So for me, the TTRS is just a way to get into that technology. But obviously, it looks like a pretty sweet car. Matt's got opinions on the looks. I'm saying it looks rakish and sportish, but Matt? An easy fix to this problem is obviously just a good pair of external speakers or headphones, but I did see some questions about this in the review and I wanted to make sure I addressed it here for you guys. I still think not having Windows Hello incorporated into some aspect of this machine is a really big missed opportunity, especially for a high-end premium laptop like the Blade that costs two grand. Though I will say the keyboard and the trackpad on the Blade are an almost unbeatable combo. Razer sure knows how to make a good keyboard and the trackpad is only runner up in my opinion to Apple's MacBook Pro. I think that this is one of, if not the best trackpad you can get on a Windows laptop. It's big, it's spacious, it has Windows precision drivers and it's just very nice to use. The more time I spend with the Blade, the more I can confirm my original thoughts and conclusions. Things I liked the first time, I still like just as much this time, and the shortcomings were just as annoying the second time around. With the better battery performance, my opinion goes from being a little more on the fence to much more willing to recommend this to those who are looking for one beastly gaming machine, though that's gonna come at a very premium price tag. And I know, I know that there are better spec systems out there for a similar price, maybe some even cheaper, and there are lots of other options for the money you're gonna spend on this blade. But for me, it's gonna come down to a couple of things that are important. Build, performance, battery life, and just how long and how well this computer will stand up to the test of time. For a starting price tag of almost $2,000, this laptop better have the components, the build, and the power to justify that kind of investment, especially for a gaming laptop. But I think the 2018 Blade fits the bill, it checks almost all the boxes, and certainly, at least for me, did not disappoint. So my opinions on the Blade have changed a bit. Definitely the better battery life is going to really make me want to recommend this more to family, friends, and to you guys who really want a great gaming rig on the go. And what are your thoughts on the Blade? I know a lot of you guys own this machine. Leave your comment down below and let us know what you think. Also, are you more tempted or more curious about upgrading to the new Blade? Do you have an older Razer laptop? Or what are you using to play games these days? Leave a comment and let us know. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Thank you so much. Be sure, of course, to subscribe to the channel. Click that bell to turn on notifications so you're notified about all our videos coming up. Appreciate it, guys. I'll see you in the next one.